everybody, I'm Rosie and I want to share some more with y'all today about the Irish language. Um, today's video is going to be about Irish eclipses, otherwise known as Uru. I did a video about this in the past, um, but I wanted to redo it with updated graphics for y'all and also explanations of when eclipses occurs, not just what it is. So let's start out with what it is. So sometimes in Irish, we'll need to add an extra letter to the beginning of the word, the sound of which then replaces the original initial consonant sound of the word. Now that's a mouthful, but I'll give you an example. So we've got boher, the word for road. Well, if we eclipse that word, we add an M to the beginning of the word, and it goes from boher to moher. Notice that only the sound of the initial consonant drops, not the consonant itself. That's kept in the word, just not pronounced. So that extra letter that you're gonna add to the beginning of the word, um, I like to think of that as like a buddy letter. Um, and each consonant, uh, with a few exceptions, in the Irish language um, has its own unique one of these buddy letters called an uru which sometimes will come to help it um, by taking over or eclipsing the sound of the initial consonant. So I have the list here and it's just something you gotta memorize. So for B, the uru is M. For C, it's G. For D, it's N. For F, it's BH. BH is treated as a single letter in this case. Um, it will be pronounced as a W sound, W, if A, O, or U follows the F, and it'll be pronounced as a V if E or I follows the F in word. The buddy letter for G is N, the buddy letter for P is B, and the buddy letter for T is D. L, M, N, R, and S, though, are never eclipsed. So I came up with a little trick. Um, a couple years ago to help me remember um, which uru goes with which consonant and I hope it's helpful to y'all and it's my brother goes Colin next door Debbie tolerates no guy but Pete because he's fabulous <laughs> so in the pink we've got the consonants in the green we've got the corresponding urus that are gonna always go with those consonants and there's Pete he's got his flowers Look at Debbie, she just loves him. <laughs> so now that we understand what eclipses is, let's talk about when it's used. And these rules can vary by dialect, but I'm going with the standard Irish rules. So eclipses is used after the prepositions egg, er, flee, la, o, riv, har, tree, and um. If the object of the preposition occurs with the article un, which means the, it's the singular form of the word the in Irish. So for example, we have board, table. But if we say on the table, er un mord, because we have the article un, and we have the preposition er, er un mord, on the table. But this one particular rule does not apply to D or T words. For example, dryhood, bridge, but or in dryhood on the bridge, you don't eclipse the D or T words after those prepositions. Um, if you did, it would be er in dryhood, but you wouldn't say that. The next um, instance where eclipses will occur is after the preposition I, meaning in, if there is no article, un or na, both meaning the, one singular, the other's plural. So for example, kahar, city, but Igahar in a city. So another instance where you'll use eclipses is after the plural article na, meaning the, um, when the noun is in the genitive plural. And I'm not going to get too into genitive right now, but basically the genitive form of a noun is like um, loosely translated often as of the, but really it's more like a weaker version of the original noun, but you can think of it like of the. So for example, we've got bratach, flag, but namratach, of the flags. 
and that's just how that one word forms its plural genitive. You're also going to use ellipsis after the plural possessive pronouns are, were, and a, uh, meaning our, y'all's, and their. So we got cha, house, but were ja, y'all's house. You're also going to use ellipsis after the numbers 7 through 10, and 17 through 19, and 27 through 29, 37 through 39, etc. For example, we've got fockle, which means word, but 48 words is oct wackle is diehed. Okay, so two things with that. Remember from before my video about counting objects, you kind of sandwich the object you're counting in between the tens and the ones place. Um, this is also an example of what I was talking about before, about um, BH is treated as a single uru letter here, eclipsing the F. After the F is an O, which is a broad vowel, so the BH will be pronounced like a W and not a V, so it's wackle. You're going to also use eclipses on the verb after the verbal particles and the conjunctions on, go, nach, mura, da, sala, and aha. Um, for the example in this one, I'm going to use the verbal particle un to show what I mean. Um, talked about this in the video about present tense verbs. Now, in this sense, un is not the same as the word the, like we talked about earlier in this video. This word really has no meaning. That's why it's a particle. Um, it just sort of triggers the mind, in this case, to know that you're going to ask a question. So, for example, we have canon she, she sings, but unganon she, does she sing? Eclipsis is also used after ka, meaning where. So, for example, playen she a day, they discuss it, but ka blayen she a day, where do they discuss it? Another place that we're going to use eclipsis is on the verb after the indirect relative particle uh. Now, this isn't the same uh that we talked about earlier that can mean there as a possessive pronoun. Um, it also can mean his or her. But this word uh is a particle. It has no standalone meaning on its own. It combined with the eclipsis on the verb following it will just work together to trigger the mind to know that an indirect relative clause is coming. An indirect relative clause is a clause that's dependent on the main clause and whose subject is not the same subject as the subject of the main clause but refers back to it in some way. Like whose, of which, in which, etc. So, for example, we've got Janan Awak Im, which means his son makes butter. Now, that uh means his, Awak, his son. But if we said Shine and Far and Yanan Awak Im, that's the man whose son makes butter. Well, we clearly have an indirect relative clause here because the son is the subject of the indirect relative clause, um, not the man, like the main clause. It does, however, refer back to the man with the word whose. Um, the Irish sentence there, it can literally be, semi-literally be translated as, that's the man that his son makes butter. The uh there, combined with the eclipsis on Janin to become Nyanin, um, triggers our mind to know this is an indirect relative clause, and that combined with the his in his son is the equivalent of whose in Irish. Another place you're going to use eclipsis is on the verb after the generalizing particle uh, which can loosely be translated to all that. Um, for example, hyani to a you bought it, but hanik me a gyanitu I saw all that you bought. 
And one last extra tip, and that's that if the eclipsed word is capitalized, only the original consonant is capitalized. The uru remains in lowercase. So, for example, berla, English, but imerla, in English. Um, the M is lowercase, the B is capitalized. Um, go, foreigner, but dunanal, fort of the foreigners, Donegal. I hope all this was helpful, and if you want to see my notes just without the video, um, you can go to my Instagram and find them there, and I'll see y'all later. Chief of Maribol, Chief, Slan. Thank you.